Hi, I'm Adrian Haverstadt, Executive Director of the Evangelical Friends Church International and Chair of the Pastoral Ministry Department here at Barclay College. Hey, check out Barclay College, www.barclaycollege.edu. We offer full tuition scholarship. Yep. That's free tuition for all students who seek a degree on our main campus. So come learn about Jesus and be prepared for a lifetime of vocational service and ministry. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The Justice Center at Dr. Halvey. We're looking to set things right through the Justice Center. Justice, setting things right. The kingdom of God is all about setting things right in the world today as God has originally designed that Jesus has provided through his work and his atonement for our sins and the Holy Spirit has empowered us to do uh, through his infilling. In order to be a minister of the gospel today, you've got to answer the shepherd's call. The shepherd's call comes to us really from Ephesians chapter 4. In Ephesians 4, the Apostle Paul tells us that as Jesus was ascending up into heaven, he gave gifts to his people, to all of his people. So that means everyone, including you and me, regardless of our age or denomination, regardless of our gender, Christ has given gifts to us all. For the purpose of what? Building one another up, edifying and encouraging each other, and for the continuation of Jesus' work on earth until he returns. Yes, that's right. Jesus is coming back soon. But until then, we must be busy doing the work and doing it as he has outlined for us in the shepherd's call from Ephesians chapter 4. So Paul says in verse 11 of Ephesians 4 that as Jesus ascended, he gave gifts. And those gifts were apostle prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. You know, if we're going to answer the shepherd's call, it's going to mean we're going to be serving in one of those five ways. It means that if our church is going to be successful in ministry, we're going to need all five in order to thrive. We must have five to thrive. And so we're studying the fivefold ministry of the church that comes to us from the shepherd's call in Ephesians 4.11. We've looked at four of those callings thus far, and today we're going to focus in in this session on teaching. Teachers, they teach and they edify. They build up. Teachers are agents of the Holy Spirit. They inspire divine life and living in God's people. Teachers, under the anointing of Jesus Christ, are able to inspire their listening, their listeners through their pedagogy, their teaching. Uh, through anointed teachers, people are often more des become more desirable for knowledge of the Bible, and they commit themselves to seeking out deeper truths from God's Word. Teachers are able to inspire us in that way. As teachers go deep and study and bring lectures and facilitate discussions about the Bible, it illuminates for us things that we've never seen before and helps enrich our life and understanding of how great our God is and his love for each one. Prophets or preachers reveal the heart of God through their vocal ministry. Teachers reveal the mind of God, and they help us explore the depths of our infinite God. Prophets and teachers often complement and balance each other in the church. For example, through preaching, prophets help us to see the full spectrum, the big picture of life and ministry, to help us maintain the margins, the lines of demarcation that we need to stay in in terms of Christian orthodoxy and ministry and service. Maintain focus in our life. While teachers, on the other hand, help us drill down deep into the specifics of God's Word. Prophets often have their hand on the pulse of current events. They often share revelation of hidden things or things that are com will come in the future. While teachers disclose 
hidden things of the Bible. They go mining deep into the soil of Scripture to pull out hidden gems and treasures from sacred literature. Preachers provide foresight, and teachers often give insight. As I pointed out in a previous video, Paul instructed his pastoral student, Timothy, I believe it's 1 Timothy chapter 3, that as a pastor, he must be able to teach. In the sense of the plain meaning of Paul's statement, Timothy needed to know that to fulfill his role at that time in history, in the location that he was, working with the people that he was working with, he needed to be a teacher. His calling would demand it. So that's the plain meaning of the text. Paul was saying, Timothy, you need this. But as we pull the dynamic meaning and principles from Paul's word, we can see how that's applicable to us in the 21st century. It's beneficial today for pastors to be able to teach. Remember from our discussions last week, uh, or in our last video, excuse me, uh, sh shepherds or pastors are sheepdogs. <laughs> They're guardians of the flock of Christ's sheep. They must be able to train the flock. And one of the ways that sheepdogs train the flock is through their various barks that they're able to generate. Barks that herd them, barks that move them along to different locations, barks that give them warnings about predators in the area. Sheepdogs are highly intelligent. They're brilliant and, and they're able to learn how to use uh, their vocal ministry, their barking, in order to protect the sheep, to guard the sheep. So in this sense, all pastors should gain a skill set for teaching, whether you're a first century pastor, as Timothy was, or a 21st century pastor. All pastors should have a skill set for teaching. But that does not mean that all teachers need to be pastors. There is a distinction. Teachers are essential in the body of Christ by giving the sheep a deep foundation of the word of God. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, a foundation built on shallow ground or sinking sand, shifting sand, will fail. But one that's built on the solid rock, a sure foundation, will withstand the elements of the world. You know, sometimes churches that place a high emphasis on being spirit-led neglect the solid grounding of the Bible. And of course, we have the opposite, too. There are some churches that focus so much upon Scripture that they don't allow time for the Holy Spirit to move in their midst. Both are dangerous in the church today and limit the ability of the church to emulate the life of Jesus and to grow up into his wisdom and stature as he would desire for each of us. There's a simple saying to remember. Teaching the Word without the Spirit and people will dry up. Chase the spirit without being grounded in the word, and people will blow up. Teachers are needed today so the church can grasp the full counsel of Scripture on a biblically-led faith and practice. We need teachers to assist in training the church in the fivefold ministry of Jesus, to which each one of us is called to participate in. Ah, the fivefold ministry of the church. In terms of the gospel and the fivefold ministry, we can set things right in the world. Prophets tell the sheep about the feeding grounds of green grass made available to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Pastors then lead the sheep safely to green pastures and guard over them, watch them while they eat. Teachers keep digging deep into the soil of the word, tilling the soil and refreshing the stand of green grass for spiritual consumption so that we can just continue to uh, feast on the goodness of our Lord. And evangelists, well, they take that sustenance from the good shepherd's pastor, 
and they go out on the highways and the byways of life and they find lost sheep people are hurting marginalized people of the word and the world and they feed them and they tell them about the one who loves them and gave their life for them and they invite them to come into the fold to come into the green pastures and taste and to see that the lord is good for it is the good shepherd john 10 tells us who laid down his life for his sheep we need the fivefold ministry of the church so what are the habits of a good teacher? One habit is love. Good teachers love and spend time with the people whom they teach. Prayer. Biblical interpretation is an art and a science. So we need prayer. The art side of the equation requires prayer. When it comes to biblical interpretation, the art side says we need the Holy Spirit to help us rightly interpret the Word of God. Otherwise, it will not happen. So as we're studying the Word, we need to be praying and asking the Spirit of God, help me understand this. Help me know truly what it is you want me to know about this passage and how do I apply it to my own audience. And there's the habit of preparation. Study 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 we've got to be prepared to be fully prepared to instruct uh, one must be a lifelong learner there must be constant research uh, about the bible reading and studying the bible writing about the bible preparing lessons some we may teach others we may never teach but it's about enriching our own lives so that we can be prepared so that when we have opportunity to speak of deep things about the bible it can just roll out of us naturally because it's become so much a part of who we are then there's the habit of humility good teachers know their limitations Good teachers can say when necessary, man, I don't have a clue how to answer your question, but together we could probably figure it out. That's good teaching. Humility is needed. Humility is something that attracts people and connects them uh, with others. So a humble teacher is one that has the trust and the faith and the camaraderie of their hearers. Then there's the habit of gratitude. Psalms 100 verse 4 says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart and into his courts with praise. I will give thanks to him and bless his holy name. You know, good teachers have a spirit or an attitude of gratitude. They're thankful for the times they have to study God's word, to go deep and to enrich their own lives. They're thankful for the opportunity that God has given them, the calling he has placed upon their life to do these things so that they can share it, teach it to others so they too can have a robust relationship with their infinite loving God. There's some things we want to remember. One is Teaching is only as good as the preparation. Teacher, you will only be as good as what you prepare for. So make it a habit. Be a lifelong learner of the Word of God so that you can be effective in your teaching. Another thing to remember is a passion for the Bible is caught just as much as it is taught. So if you get up in front of people as a teacher and act like you've been weaned on a dill pickle and you have this sour disposition, there's probably a good chance that people are not going to catch a desire to study the Word of God. Some may get it through your teachings, but a lot of the inspiration for bringing people to the Word of God is caught by who we are and how we approach uh, people and what our disposition is. And third, teaching is more than one-way communication. Teachers must set the table for a two-way communication. As teachers of the Bible, we are really facilitators. We're guiding people through our teaching to an existential encounter with the living Word, Jesus Christ, through the written Word the Bible. We need teachers today in the body of Christ. 
in order to have the full ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ going on.